Well, our next guest, Louisiana Republican Congressman Steve Scalise, chair of the Republican Study Committee, has a plan with more than 100 co-sponsors in the House, and he has asked the president for the meeting so they can talk about this. He joins us now live. Uh, Congressman, welcome, and have you gotten a response from the White House? Well, Shannon, good to be with you. And, and no, unfortunately, we have not gotten uh, any kind of response back. We sent a letter to the president taking him up on, on his offer. He said, look, there are no alternatives out there, and I'll meet with anybody. And, of course, we've got an alternative. It's called the American Health Care Reform Act uh, with over 100 co-sponsors of the bill. So we've got medical doctors in Congress that help write this bill. Uh, it does a lot to put patients back in charge of health care to lower costs as opposed to what we're seeing with the president's approach that's raising costs and taking people's health care away. So it's a, it's a good bill that we're proud of. We'd love to sit down with the president uh, and go through with him how we can actually put patients back in charge and fulfill those promises that he made to so many people that have been broken time and time again. Well, I hear these conversations and I'm part of these conversations all the time, and people say this line that the president continues to say that all the GOP wants to do is repeal the entire bill. He said it himself, go back to the status quo uh, before any kind of reform. Uh, and he said that they have, uh, if they have any alternatives, they sure haven't presented them. Uh, and, and people, a lot of folks out there believe that, that you haven't presented an alternative. So content aside, how do you get any traction with this message? How do you get that meeting with the president? Well, you know, and I think this is one of the reasons that the president's credibility is so diminished, because he continues to go out in public and say things that just aren't true. You know, he said, if you like what you have, you can keep it. Of course, millions of Americans know now that promise has been broken. He's broken so many other promises within his own health care law. But when he says that there are no other alternatives out there, uh, he just hasn't actually looked at this bill. And I mean, this isn't something that just got thrown out there. It's been out for months now. It was written by a number of medical doctors in Congress. It's the official uh, bill uh, endorsed by the Republican Study Committee. We're the, largest, uh, we're the largest caucus in all of Congress. Like I said, over 118 members of Congress now that have co-sponsored this bill, including a number of medical doctors, and it puts patients back in charge. It focuses on lowering costs. It takes care of pre patients with pre-existing conditions. Very common sense reforms that would have been good before the president's health care law that are even more important now. All right. On that note, please let us know if you hear back from the White House, because we'd love to know uh, if you can have some uh, constructive discussions with the White House. I want to ask you as well about the budget, uh, which got through the House this week, this bipartisan budget plan. It's headed to a vote in the Senate. You voted no. Why did you decide to vote no on this particular deal? Well, ultimately, Shannon, I'd like to see us really tackle the bigger issues to get back to a balanced budget. Uh, to get some real certainty and soundness in our economy so we can actually have a healthy economy. Uh, unfortunately, President Obama has refused to work on anything uh, that solves our long-term problems. And so as we continue to have these little short-term deals, uh, you know, I, I commend uh, Congressman Ryan and the work that he did uh, to try to, to address some of those bigger problems. Unfortunately, he didn't have a willing partner uh, in the Senate or in the White House that wanted to actually tackle uh, the bigger issues. Look, Medicare is about to go bankrupt if Congress and the White House do nothing. I don't think it's acceptable to sit back and do nothing. So we've put really good, sound solutions on the table. Uh, I'd still love to work on getting those problems solved. And, and so, you know, for now, this was, a, this was a deal that just didn't address the bigger problems. Well, it sounds like uh, it's going to be a very tight vote in the Senate. Um, you know, Democrats say they need eight additional Republicans to help them get this over the goal line. We talked to Senator Tim Scott uh, earlier today, a Republican who said he is going to be in the no column on this. If it fails, what happens next? Because after the first of the year, we know a lot of big things are coming. If you could quickly tell us where we go from here. You know, well, I'm not going to speak for what the Senate will do. We'll, you know, we'll have to see in the next uh, few days, but ultimately it did pass the House. Um, you know, we, we've always had good solutions on the table that address the bigger problems. Uh, we, in fact, passed a House budget uh, with, with a large number of votes that, that actually gets us back to a path to balance in 10 years and creates that healthy economy that we're looking for. Uh, so there are a lot of good ideas we've been putting out there. Uh, nice to see the Senate finally meeting, but they, they actually need to start passing some things and addressing the bigger problems. It'd be nice to see the president get off the sidelines and put his own solutions on the table as well. We'll watch that Senate vote, and we'll wait to hear from you if you get that meeting with the president. Uh, Congressman, we'll thank you, you know. so much. We appreciate your time. Great being with you, Shannon.